Hi everyone, welcome to Relatively Sane. This is your host, Jackie Kirschenbaum. I just felt like giving myself a new name today. I am loving doing these podcasts from home. You know, it's really horrible being by myself and not being able to hug or kiss my friends or scissor. You know, it's like, it's not easy. It's not easy to not be able to go to second with some of my friends, but I'm managing. I'm kind of liking that I can look like shit all day and it doesn't matter. I, I, I know some people are getting up and showering and doing their hair and doing makeup. It's just not my thing. I mean, I think a lot of you can relate to that. I I am, I basically look, I, I'm not being offensive, but it's the truth. I look homeless and don't send me messages that you feel bad for homeless people. I'm not making fun of them, but I do. I look home. I even have dirt all over my face, which is weird. And I've been sleeping on a cardboard box. I don't know. I... I'm also panhandling. I've been I've been asking for change with a can in my own house, but like my kids are so not generous. It's very hard to be home all day in the same space. But yesterday I had a really good day. It was raining out and I still was like, "You know what? I'm going to go do something fun and wild. I'm going to I'm going to get out there, do a change of scenery." So I went into my closet in my guest bedroom and I sat there all day and I I felt like I had taken a trip back to when I was lying and hiding that I was a big dyke. That's not true. I never called myself a big dyke. I mean, I'm big, but I'm not a dyke. And I don't, I don't, I know some of you might get upset. I don't like the word queer. I'm not like, hi, I'm Jessica and I'm queer. I don't care if other people say it. I'm just not into it. I like saying um, carpet muncher. Like if someone is just like, oh, are you gay? I'm like, I'm gay, but I really would prefer it if you call me a carpet muncher. Like if you, if that's how you describe me, that would be great. I just feel like that's so much better. Um, I, I am so, you know what I'm having the hardest time with is food. I mean, of course I am. Like I am stuck home with all this food. We have a very big snack drawer, which a lot of times there's so many kinds of chips in there that if I take a little out of every single bag, you can't really tell that I'm binging because I'm eating a little bit from each bag. Like if I ate all the pretzels, it would be obvious that I ate the pretzels. Like if that bag gets much lower, but I'm eating so many, like 20 different kinds of chips. So it's great. That's really, really great. And um, I'm trying not to have sugar. Yesterday I had 17 cupcakes, but I, I, they're, they're sugar free. (laughs) Yeah, they're sugar free. (laughs) I'm, I'm, they're not sugar free. I, I, it's been tough to not have contact. I want to tell you guys, Rachel Feinstein, who is, uh, was on my podcast and is one of my best friends, did the nicest thing. She drove out to my house the other day on Long Island and brought me a challah and a pie and gifts for my kids because my father passed and she wanted to do kind of like a shiva thing. And then she stood six feet from me And we talked and it was the nicest thing. It was, it brought me so much joy, but it also brought me sadness that I couldn't jump on top of her and hump her because that's what I really wanted to do. I just wanted to hump her in front of her husband and make him jealous. It's all going to be okay, everyone. I want to tell you that it's all going to be okay. Try to be positive. From every breakdown, there's a breakthrough. I know I always say this stuff, but it's really true. This is going to turn around. And when when we can go out again and do things, it's going to be so much fun and crazy. And this episode is wild. You are going to love my guest today. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please spread the word. Follow me on social media. Don't forget I have a Patreon account where you get exclusive materials. You get the materials. Like I don't give out like scrap metal. You get exclusive videos and you get the two podcasts that I do every week now, 
early so you get first dibs at the podcasts and it's it's only five eight dollars or a thousand dollars a month whatever you want to give me i'm also doing cameos you can hire me or vivian eisenstein or matt or any of my characters i'll do cameos for you i love you all stay safe thank you for listening and here is my incredible interview with Giannis pappas Hi, everyone. Welcome to Relatively Sane. I am here with my guest today, who I absolutely adore, Giannis Pappas. Hi. I'm excited to be here, and I'm having flashbacks of when I did uh, Therapy by Skype. (laughs) Wait, when did you do that? 2013, when I moved to Miami, and, and I was in a bad place, and my therapist was like, we can continue by Skype. And I was like, you know what? I'm, I can't concentrate thinking you might have your shoes off, you know, like <laughs> that just is... thinking he may be kicked back and like, just, you know, like scratching his balls or whatever right. out of frame. I just, I couldn't do it. Well, I just thought you were talking about a woman, which is gross that I even like thought that. So then when you said scratching his balls, I was like, oh my God. And she was yeah. also transitioning. Like that's a lot. Right. Yeah. Well, he was, uh, I used to love him, but you know, once in a while he would just do one of those, like in the middle of my set, he would like. <laughs> His eyes would roll. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I didn't know if he was falling asleep or, pa- I mean, the, n- therapists don't get enough credit for their listening skills to be able to keep themselves awake during, I mean, our lives are, bo- our problems and, and lives are boring as fuck. Yes. And hats off to them to be able to listen to us going like, well, you know, I think it's because of my childhood and my father didn't hold me. It's like, who cares? Fucking excite me. Did you bang some hookers? When's the last time you did math? I mean, they don't have That's any- That's so true. Fu- yeah. I think mine is pretty entertaining because I'm so fucked up. But I think that a lot, most people just go and they're like, yeah, I just feel alone and my dad wasn't around. Like I'm, I'm constantly having major problems. So it's more interesting. Yeah, you, you, I could see Chris being interesting. Me, it's yeah, just like Chris Stefano. The, the first six fucking episodes, the first six, look, I said episodes. I know, we're losing I'm our like, minds. I should film my therapist off. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I should go to the next therapy session. Be like, look, I know you're getting paid or whatever, but look, this is a lot of wasted content for me. Can we film this? <laughs> yeah. And can I put it on my Patreon? Yeah, you're like, welcome, Dr. Cohen, to my Patreon. Like, you're just losing your mind. You start confusing yeah. everything. Yeah. This oh, is, my we, God. We start to live in some sort of, like, Orwellian parallel universe where, like, actually living without cameras on is a minority of our day. This Giannis, I'm not kidding. I've thought of doing my whole life live. I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. I really don't yeah. you think that would be good just to just yeah. start just who cares anymore? Yeah. Well, I have, uh, you know, I moved to the country, so I just put uh, Google Nest cameras in my front of my back and uh, <laughs> may, might as well finish the job, put them everywhere. Yeah. All I do now is just whenever there's Giannis- an alert, there's some activity, I just get a baseball bat and I get ready. Where get are you? Country, God damn it. Where are you? Where in the country? I, I yeah, I moved to the country right before this happened. So I moved at a time that it almost looks like I was in on the spread of this virus. <laughs> I did too. I... <laughs> I see. I got a heads up from the Trump administration, so I bought a house right when this happened. Right. right. Well, that's a, lot of a good don't time. Know that. Just spend all your money on a house, and now we're not making a cent. So it was really good timing to do that. Well, well, you want to hear even worse timing for me? Yeah. Right. So I bought a house, and then right before this happened, I decided to buy a Tesla. So What? Yeah. So now I'm just, I've started a website where I'm trying to find <laughs> guys who are into my feet. I just want people to look at my feet for $5. Whatever it Are you being you have, serious or kidding? No, I'm dead serious. What? Yeah. You, I'm an idiot. Wait. Giannis, wait, I yeah. know the Tesla's real, but are you really having people look at your feet? No, but it's a good idea. I'm I think it's it. a great idea. I mean, yeah. mine are so dry right now, they could like fix my whole driveway. <laughs> but when like I put my I was... feet in the sheets, it sounds like a cat's in there with like yeah. long nails. <laughs> yeah, it's bad. If I was to set up, what do you think? Like, If I needed to set up some sort of like, kink or niche fetish site for me to make money who would i target and what should i do eyebrows eyebrows 
Eyebrows. Eyebrows, beard. Um, yeah. I, your, are your feet nice? I do have cute guy feet. I'll be honest with you. They're very symmetrical. Okay. So cute yeah. guy feet would be good. Yeah. What else would you do and feel safe with? Um, at this point, I just need to make my Tesla payment. So safety is kind of on the back burner. Okay. Do you want to start selling pictures of my hips? Let's do it. I if think you, you'd make yeah. a ton of money. Okay. From my hips. All right. Have you been eating more? I've been eating like I'm staying at an all inclusive resort. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, chicken fingers. Uh, we've been doing uh, Elio's pizza. We've been oh, doing that's pizza so bagels. good. Yeah. 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 I'm fatter now. And I had a couple <laughs> beers last night for no reason. It's starting to get to that where I'm just going like, might as well. Cause you know, I'm just oh. looking for things to do. Mm -hmm. So I'm taking more baths to make the shower process longer. <laughs> I'm drinking more beers because they're there. Whatever's there, I'm grabbing it. Well, it's getting rid of feelings when you drink the beers, right? Yes. All this stuff is getting rid of feelings. Do you, and you, do you get, you don't get high, do you? No, yeah. I don't get high. Um, Cause that's yeah, helpful just, I, for some people to just lay in bed, to just get yeah. high and just lay around. Yeah, this is bad. This is going to be bad for them. Because I know. They're, yeah. Do you remember when I was like 225? Like there was a, no. I was 220. There was like a period where I was just like a fat tub of shit. Yeah. <laughs> I'm headed back that, I'm headed back to that country. Giannis, I could yeah. barely fit on stage. <laughs> okay. No, you're always good. I am going to, listen, I figured out what I'm going to do. I'm going to blow up to twice the size I was. And then I'm going to be a star on my 600 pound life and get a sitcom deal. <laughs> that is Watch. a good fucking six month plan. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Because Danielle's both brothers are firemen, so they can cut me out of the room. <laughs> and <laughs> good plan. You thought this through. But you know what's going well is History Hyenas. Uh, Your, the podcast with Chris is going really well. Well, one of our best episodes was with you. I oh. mean, you, if there's someone tailor made for that show, it's like, to be honest with you, I think Chris is a little bit of a sociopath. Like he doesn't have a lot of feelings. He doesn't laugh at anything. I mean, but when you come on, like all he was doing was giggling, like, like he was at my brother's school, you know? Yeah. And what I mean by that, <laughs> Your my brother's, brother's school. My brother's special needs. So I know that's why I laughed, but I don't know if people listening know that. They didn't know, so I had to qualify. But I mean, he nobody makes Chris laugh the way you were making him laugh. You, our episode with you was one of our, but you're like, you're a crowd favorite already. So it's like, you're number one, I think, of our guests. Oh, I love it. I would do it anytime you guys want. If you get sick of Chris and you want to just add me on for five minutes. Yeah. I mean, it's, I'm, I mean, I'm sick of Chris every day. I mean, I talk to the kids so much. I know. Ridiculous. I was just texting with him all morning and it's just yeah. the two of us. I mean, it's, it, plus there's also, do you notice with Chris, there's like five conversations going on at one time on the text? Yeah. You know, it's funny because he always calls me a tough hang because I can get a little too ranty and yeah, I, I understand. I'm like, I wouldn't want to hang out with myself more than a couple minutes either, <laughs> but <laughs> But Chris, he's a tough hang too, just because he's not present. He's always no. He's not else. present. He's not. He's not You're right. No, he's not yeah. present at all. He's, so not, he's listening not listening to listening. one thing. Yeah, he's not listening to anything you're saying. He's saying he's responding, and he's in the middle of twenty text conversations. I know. He's he's answering a hundred DMs. I like, know. He's just not there. Yeah. Yeah. Yesterday he told me he's so horny he fucked his Keurig, and I was like, that's <laughs> that could be a problem. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, this is not going to be good for him right now. Being, being, uh, no, yeah, be quarantine. No, he, he's almost. It's almost like he's in pussy rehab right now. This is what it would be like for him. Oh my God, you're so right. But then he has to do the work. Like it's like if yeah. you, it's like with addiction. If you don't hit a bottom, you're not gonna like. It's not gonna work. Yeah, yeah. We got into a big fight. You want to hear about the big fight? You we did? got into like a real fight. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you the fight. Actually, yeah, I'll just tell it to you for your for your podcast, yeah. because I love you so much. We have it as a million dollar option on Patreon, the actual fight. That's we have a, hysterical. Yeah, we got the, we got the, we got the uh, million dollar, uh, we, we have two million dollar episodes that people can buy. That is, One is the funniest <laughs> thing I've ever heard. Million dollars, what happened? The million dollars, yeah. So the first one is an episode with Tim Dillon where we just started railing on everyone and we couldn't air it yeah and the second one was an actual on-air fight that we got into <gasps> that we, 
it was real. So we cut it out. Someone needs to buy that. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, I'll tell you on your episode. So our fans who look at this, they'll be dying to know yeah, what because your happened. fans listen to mine and mine listen to yours. So let me, let me hear what happened. So what happened was he was telling me about like, he got, you know, at one point he, he got uh, paranoid. He thought he had chlamydia. And uh, this was after he had it. Right. He's had it 14 times. Right. Yeah. He's had it a few times. So he he thought he had it again. And like, yeah, he's telling me about it and everything. And then um, (laughs) he was like, he he had a full panic attack. And then he said he realized he had the panic attack because he had taken too much vitamin B that day. And I said, yeah, I'm sure it had nothing to do with the fact that you banged, you know. And then he just flipped out. (gasps) Really? Because he never does that. I'm using the condom. What else do you want me to do? And so, yeah, every now and then, if I want to make him a little angry, uh, if he's saying he's feeling a little under the weather, he's sick, I'm, I say, did you have too much de- vitamin B? Because <laughs> <laughs> he was trying to say the vitamin B is what kicked off the anxiety attack. And I was like, I, you know, I Googled that. I don't think vitamin B is responsible for, uh, you know, uh, physical symptoms too much. First of all, who even takes vitamin B? I mean, does he like inject it into himself? You're talking about how much he would have had to take a ton of it to have. Exactly. And he has them all the time, panic attacks. Yeah. And I said, did you take anything else with the vitamin B? And he said, yeah, I had about three or four large iced coffees, cold brews. And I said, maybe that had something to do with the vitamin B. (laughs) I would love to hear you guys get into a fight. That would be intense. But you you, like won the fight, right? I mean, you're. I didn't. I didn't win the fight. I just think that he's a nicer person than I am. Yeah. Deeper. He's a sweeter human. Either that or he pretends to be. I don't know the kid. I mean, I've known the kid for years. I don't know what's going on. But he's a I think he, he doesn't a have. Person. I have a little bit of a mean streak. Like I can yeah. get like, you know, he's he. I think he's more reasonable and and, and he, rational mm-hmm. because he's a cold German. You know, like that's how they work. And I'm yeah. like an emotional mess. I'm like a Greek. Yeah. So I'm willing to blow the whole thing up. Whereas yeah. he he will preserve it at the end. Like. Well, I'm just going like, I'll just blow this whole thing up. Right. You know, I'm, so. I'm like, I'm leaving. I'm never speaking to the person again. That's it. It's over. Yeah. 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 So, but we we're such good friends that, you know, we thought it was funny. We made jokes about it. And, you know, we're got, you know, just two guys. So, you know, we fought and like, even if we had a fist fight, I, you know, I've had fist fights with some of my childhood friends and, you know, they're still, it just, you, you fight and then it's over. And then, you know, guys are get it so out. different. You're so, you know, I've had so many people say to me, like in business, in the entertainment business, you have to, you can't act like a girl. Like I would send emails and be like, thank you so much, please. Do you mind? Thank you. I really appreciate it. And I've had some people say to me, like, stop, you sound pathetic. You got to be like a guy, like they can argue. And then an hour later they go get a beer. Like it's not that big of a deal. Yeah. Guys are kind of, I think we're simpler in that way. But you know, I this business. I've met some tough. There's some, I know. You know. There's some tough women too. I don't. You know, I don't know if it's like gender specific. Generally, I think it is probably a little bit. But I mean, no. You know, there's there's some, some tough women in this business, and there's some very soft guys. I mean, yeah. That's like a general would, thing. But yeah, I mean, there's a lot of guys I would rather like. Uh, I'd rather fist fight than have to even have conversations with some of the women I've met in this business. That's how tough they are. Right. Would you rather fist fight um, Godfrey or get into an argument with Judy Gold? (laughs) (laughs) That's a fucking Sophie's choice. Wow. Yeah. Seriously. (laughs) That's a good one. I think I would 100% rather fucking fist fight Godfrey. Really? Oh, that's yeah. incredible. Godfrey's be, built. Yeah, he'll it'll be quick and easy. I'll get a quick ass kicking. Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, Judy, Judy Gloat, I mean, it's, I'm I'm in for a long fucking day. Oh, forget it. Judy. She's six yeah. feet tall. But it's not it's not her look. It's just she would she can go at it. Like yeah, I don't can, I'm afraid of her. I'm friends with her and I'm she scares the shit out of me. Yeah, she will she will she will uh harangue me and yeah, and yeah. just leave it leave emotional scars. Yeah, I can't have that. Yeah. I mean, I love her, but she's tough. Like when I'm around her, I'm like, should I suck dick again? You know what I mean? I just don't know <laughs> what to do. Yeah, she's uh I, she's hysterical. I love Judy. Oh my you god, she's one work. of the funniest people on earth. I'm not kidding. She's so I, funny. So funny. I have a question yeah. for you. What do you think is going to happen with this world? Like I know you I don't mean politically. I'm just saying like after this whole pandemic, seriously, do you think it's going to be different? 
like I mean I do with all the germ stuff and everything. What what do you think? Yeah, I mean I think um that you've I think first of all stand up is really going to suffer. I think <laughs> you do stand up com yeah, I think stand up comedy. I think it's unpredictable but I think ultimately they're not really saying it but when you think about it, it's got to be when they come up with a vaccine. I mean, the 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 summer's not going to slow this thing down. You know, they're just buying time right now to like save lives and to um, try to figure out the virus because they, it's not it's not attacking just compromised people. That's the thing. I, I know. Mean, yes, most most people who are healthy, you know, will recover. But like, if you have a few friends who are doctors in ERs, which Chris's godfather is one. I yeah. Uh, my my wife's cousin in law is a surgeon, so I'm getting firsthand information from a few, you know, uh, healthcare professionals that this thing, you know, you, there's there's 30 year old uh, kids, I know. you know, with no other. Um, underlying problems who are mm -hmm. on ventilators. So they're trying to understand it. So what's going to happen to the world, I think, is is that um, you're going to see some changes in, first of all, New York, live performances and bars are going to suffer because restaurants can do takeout, but like bars yeah. is like people can drink at home. Um, I think it'll be a while before we return to normal, especially in these dense areas where it's really bad. Oh my I mean, God, Giannis, I have a friend money. who's what? dying. I'm not, I'm, you, I mean, I, I don't, I know that sounds horrible, but it's the truth. My best friend growing up, her, her ex-husband, the father of her children, and he's, he's 50, but and he, what did he you got say it. At the beginning? I'm saying like, he's not okay. He's not right. going to be okay. And he's, he has no, I mean, he just didn't feel well and, Went on a respirator. I don't know how people can think this. It's like the Holocaust. I, I'm I'm confused if you see because, what's. Yeah, you got a lot of these dumb fucking like. <sighs> they have no other skill, and what they do is like they they they're these political fucking hacks and these charlatans who make everything partisan. So they're making I this know. partisan. It's like on both then, sides. You know, on they, both sides, they are. Yeah, they're on both sides. And, you know, the, on the right now, you, I mean, I've just been arguing with some right. I mean, the fucking, some of the dumb fuck, you know, like, what is the conspiracy? I know, when I don't like, get this it. This is an overreaction. It's like, you don't know what you're talking about. The, when there's a conspiracy, somebody benefits from it financially. Everyone's losing money. Everyone. The whole world is losing mm -hmm. money. Like, the government's trying to save lives. And you're going like, well, you know. Y'all just sit up there and have the government tell you what to do, like good fucking cops. It's like, all right, guy. He goes, they go, oh, you're scared. You're just scared because the government's telling you to be scared. It's like, no, dude, you're projecting. You're the scared one. That's what you're I always say, always too. Thinks the government is coming to fucking, yeah. you know, kill you. And mm -hmm. the government is trying to help people right now. They're trying to fucking buy time to save lives. That's what they're trying to do. And to understand the virus because they don't understand. Well, it, it doesn't make sense. A lot of it doesn't make sense. They'll say right. kids can't get it, and then there's kids and babies who've gotten it. Not a lot, thank God. But they, they're, they just had a, it's yeah, crazy. I read there was a tiger that tested. I mean, it's like, it's what is everywhere. that? Yeah, there was a tiger in the Bronx Zoo, I think, that How? tested positive. Okay, so someone that works at the zoo, I don't understand. Exactly. They don't, they, 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 was they're Chris just DiStefano figuring it out. at the Bronx Zoo? Say again? Was Chris DiStefano at the Bronx Zoo? Yeah, I mean, I don't even think that kid can crash. I mean, that kid has had so many things come through him that I think coronavirus just came in and it was already too full. Like, you know, when you go into an <laughs> elevator, <laughs> you know, you get into an elevator and you're just like, I'll take the next one. That's what the coronavirus just is. He's like, there was so much chlamydia there. He's like, there's no room for me here. I'll just move on to somebody else. The chlamydia is like, get the fuck out, motherfucker. There ain't no room. There's no room yeah. in here for you. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so, God. And, I think what you'll see is more people will work from home mm -hmm. because that, that already was possible. I think we were just going off of a, you know, just, Hey, people love human contact and that's great. But no, what, you're right about that. You're right. That's very true. A mm -hmm. lot of companies are realizing like, Hey, everything's digital. Now you can do zoom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's not as much paper. Everything can be passed, you yeah. know, instead of fax and meal, you can do it, you know, digitally. So it's mm -hmm. like people can work from home. So there'll be less business trips. Um, there's going to be a complete restructuring of the society in some sectors, I believe. I do too. And, uh, there will be, I think there's, I think a depression, un unfortunately, is inevitable. Not a recession. I do a too. Depression. Yep. Yep. Because I, I do too. Yeah. I think there's going to be such a restructuring of things that a lot of jobs are going to be rendered useless. And until there's like, a, this is just going to accelerate what was already happening. And then robotics are going to be 
used more because there's no germs with robotics. Mm -hmm. Amazon's going to continue to crush it even more and more and more. Mm -hmm. Retail's going to suffer even more and more, you know, retail in person, like mall. Malls were, were already closing. This I know. Is just gonna, this is going to kill a lot of things like that. And um, so things will change. The world after this will be different because this is unprecedented. I mean, even the Spanish flu of 1918, they didn't even know what a virus was. They didn't even know how to cure it. They didn't even have anesthesia then. So you know what? I love talking to you because you are a history buff and you do this with Chris. I mean, but seriously, has anything like this? I'm so stupid with that stuff. I really am. So nothing has ever been like this? No virus or really? No. Well, we've had SARS and MERS, which were this is a this is like a strand of SARS. It's similar to it. Mm -hmm. That's what that's why they're trying to treat it with like a, they're trying to manipulate what they were using to treat SARS. And uh, even that's going to take, you know, those those vaccine trials take about a year. I mean, even if they find something that works, they got to test it for months and months and months and months. So we're fucked. But nothing like this has ever happened. The closest thing is the Spanish flu. And it's just, it's closest because it was a global pandemic. Mm -hmm. The difference is back then the, the Spanish flu just annihilated. You know, it, it killed the equivalent of 400 million people today what that would be, it would be the equivalent of 400 million now the difference is Holy the reason why there's shit i don't know why i didn't yeah. know that okay it killed it killed uh 700 000 americans and oh globally, my god yeah i think it was like it was a equivalent to 400 million because obviously the population was a lot less back then when you add in and also the, what's what hurts us now is the thing that helps us is our technology the mm -hmm. way we travel and how easy it is to move around which w it wasn't in 1918 oh, so that right. slowed it down so if mm -hmm. we didn't do this kind of social distancing and take these mitigating uh if we didn't take these mitigating measures i mean we'd have a, we'd have an absolute bloodbath on our hands we're already probably going to have a little bit of one but you know you know right now we're at like 10,000 deaths that's confirmed but, you know, they just started testing for this thing. So how many deaths are unconfirmed? Probably three, four, five times. Who knows? I know. As many already. I know. They're projecting 100, 200,000. I mean, you know, this thing's not going to go away until there's a vaccine. So um, there's nothing because of, you know, how easily people move now and technology and how advanced the world is. The only thing comparable to it is the Spanish flu. The Spanish flu, it was much worse, though when you when you do the net cost of everything yeah. because they didn't even know what a virus was back then they didn't even have anesthesia back then they didn't have virologists back then they 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 were doing the wrong things they thought fresh air was good for it oh, wow. they didn't understand it yeah mm -hmm. they knew it was a plague but they didn't even understand how to mitigate it how to slow it down so at least we have that at least we have people working on a vaccine the thing that's going to save us is going to be scientists mm -hmm. who figure out the vaccine Hopefully this will be, it probably won't because people are stupid and they're easily, they listen to pundits with charisma. But if anything, this will be a victory for reason, for the scientific method, you know, because recently it's been this flat earth shit. There's no global I warming, know. like people just oh my shitting on scientists, but now they're going to be our fucking heroes. So, yeah. Well, what, like, God, what are you doing to like be okay at home? I know we're joking around, but do you, do you exercise? I mean, <laughs> I don't know why I'm laughing. <laughs> Yeah, do you I meditate? Mean, like, do you do anything like that for anxiety or depression? Like, no, I just either. take it on the chin. I just go into a full panic attack and stand in the hallway till it passes. Oh, Jan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why in the hallway? I, wherever it hits me, I just yeah, I just get lightheaded and I'll just I'll just take it on raw daddy. I don't wear a condom when it comes to my mental illness. I just take it straight on. Yeah. I mean, my I, yeah, I must be being punished for something, you know. So I'm just taking it. I, I'm very organic like that. I deal with my I love mental it. illness organic. organic. So you don't you don't take medication? Oh no. God, Giannis. No. Did you ever? Yeah. I I used to snort Ritalin when they gave it to me in high school, and that was about. <laughs> that no, was I don't mean snorting a drug. You're like I used to do heroin, but like that, I don't think that's what you. I don't know if that counts. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the medication gets rid of your sex drive, which is not easy. That's yeah. tough. Not all the time, I but would, mostly. Yeah, I would kind of maybe welcome that at this point. Yeah. You mean, you're, are you having yeah. sex a lot? Um, No. 
yeah. no, we're not having sex in a lot. It's not a really sexy situation. You know, we've been together six years now. She's, I love your wife dearly. He loves you. She's you're great. her favorite comic. Really? You're her number, you're her favorite comedian. Oh, yeah. I love her. She's so My great. wife's favorite comic is you. I love yeah. that. I yeah. really do. Oh my God, I met my neighbor, because I, I did just move. I met my neighbor a block down. And we we were like standing across from each other and we started talking and yeah. I, it came up that I was a comic and he's like, you know who, you know, you're, you're going to love this. He goes, I love history hyenas. I, I'm like, oh my God, those are my close friends. Like I, I wow. couldn't, that was what he said. And he said that he used to see you doing Maurice, like that he and his wife used to go see you. Yeah. And that's crazy. they've known you for years and have followed you and gone to your shows at Gotham yeah. and stuff. I, I loved it. I I think that, you know, me and Chris, I think it's like our fan base is Long Island and like. Yeah, he's a fireman you know, from Queens. Yeah. That, yeah. I mean, that's our, our fan base is very New York heavy right now. So. <laughs> it's, of course it is. Yeah. It's, uh, I mean, yeah, because, you know, it's, uh, we, we're two New York kids. It's very East Coast. You know, the East, we can't, like, East Coast guys just cannot stop being so East Coast. I know. I mean, I can't either as an East Coast woman, like a Jewish girl from Jersey. I'm so, I don't, I think, but that's why a lot of them think this is all a conspiracy. Like, we're different here. We are. We are different. Very. We are just different. Yeah, like, first of all, we accept Jews. So that's a big one. Right, right. You don't want to kill us. Yeah, right. Yeah. We actually don't, you know, like, we know firsthand you guys don't have horns that retract. Right. Which is good. Right. And you so know that, you need to do business with us even if you don't like us. You know, you have to we be gotta, okay we with We got to figure yeah. out a way. Yeah. yeah. And uh, But, you know, that's a big one. Knowing that, knowing for sure from experience that you don't have retractable horns is a big difference. <laughs> <laughs> retractable horn. <laughs> yeah, because, you know, there's a lot of places in this country that just, like, they believe that you guys got retractable horns somewhere. I say to black people all the time in the audience, you know they hate us, too. They fucking yeah. hate us, but they want to protect Jerusalem. That's yeah. why that's yeah. why they protect us, because they care about yeah. Israel. Like, they don't want anything to happen in Jerusalem because of Jesus. But they hate it's us. Re it's really funny how, like, it just always comes back around to Jews. Always. Like, they just, they will not, like, even with this corona thing, at some point, somebody's going to be like, you know, it's going to, like, one Jewish guy's going to get it, and they're going to go, you see? And then they're going to just draw this crazy roadmap back to the Jews because for some reason, people just fucking love to figure out. They think you guys are like super, like these super people who have like the powers of manipulation are like the level of Superman. I know. And, you what know? The fuck? I, the, I know. Oh, maybe they think the bat was Jewish. They probably think the bat was Jewish. <laughs> I was flying around like, oh, I'm so tired. <laughs> yeah, they, uh, yeah, it's just, it's a funny thing that somehow it just always comes back to the Jews. Like every fucking conspiracy always comes back to the Jews. People give you guys so much credit, like for being like superhumanly manipulative and they give them, and they don't so understand true. that they give themselves such little credit. In, uh, in being able to fucking just, uh, you know, have a brain cell. You're going like, like, it's even like the Greeks are like that too, because Greeks can be very racist and conspiracy. Like, it's just the conspiracies are nonstop. And they're, they're very big, like, into like Jews. And you're going like, you're going like, you know, how, like, okay, let's say it was some Jewish bankers <laughs> that bankrupted your whole country. Like, how fucking, what does that say about you? That as a people in a country, you're so weak and stupid. Yeah, because... That that's true. That's no, true. Because we're not we're yeah. not tough. That's for shit sure. You could beat us up in a fight. I mean, and it's like what what kind of fucking you know what how how ridiculously stupid do you have to be to believe that's true? But then they say, oh, we're so smart to figure it out. But it's like if you're so smart to figure it out, how come you didn't fucking prevent it? I know that's true. Well, let me talk. Uh, so, talk yeah, I want to talk. Giannis. If you're so fucking smart to figure out this big fucking Jewish conspiracy, how come you weren't fucking smart enough to prevent it, you fucking moron? <laughs> you know, I, I never thought that, about that. I need to. Uh, I need to audio tape you screaming like this because it's making me feel safer. Yeah, I mean, I, that's why I'm, I'm a lunatic. I'm an absolute fucking lunatic. 
Thank you so much to all of my Patreon members for supporting the podcast. All right, hold up. Could you take a little off, off the peas? You're hitting them too hard. The <sighs> Not <sighs> action. Thank you so much to all of my Patreon members for supporting the podcast. Hold on. Now you're whispering Patreon. Is there a reason oh. you're whispering? Well, you said to take the p. Somewhere like in the middle. Okay, okay. You ready? Action. Thank you so much to all of my Patreon members. <sighs> now you got to pause. For those of you who don't know, Patreon members, is that okay? <laughs> Patre- it was perfect. Why did you stop? Oh, okay. Patreon members. Cut. Let's go back to the beginning. Thank you and so And action. Thank you so much to all my Patreon members for supporting the podcast. For those of you who don't know, Patreon members get early access to the podcast, ad-free episodes, and access to monthly live streams where we talk more about... All right, let's take it back to the beginning. That was perfect. Do it exactly like that. I just did it well, though, but why are you starting over? Thank you so much to all of my patron... Cut. (sighs) Why are you screaming? Because I'm just trying to get through this. Action. Thank you so much to all of my... Thank you so much to all of my Patreon members. For those of you who don't know, Patreon members get early access to the podcast. Perfect. Keep going. There's so many P's. Keep going. Keep going. Ad-free episodes. You could cut this out, right? For those of you who don't know, Patreon members get early access to the podcast, ad-free episodes, and access to monthly live streams where we talk more about being relatively sane. Hold up. Did we agree on monthly live streams? Yes, you told me I should do them because it'll get more members. I don't know how to do a monthly live stream. Don't you just talk in your phone? Uh, We'll figure it out. Come on, let's get through this. We have to go. We should speed this up. All right. Thank you so much to all my Patreon members for supporting this podcast. For those of you who don't know, Patreon members get early access to the podcast, ad-free episodes, and access to monthly live streams. We don't know what that is, but whatever. Where we talk about being relatively sane. If you want to join our fantastic community that is so corny, go to patreon.com slash Jessica Curson. That's patriot.com slash Jessica Curson. That's Patreon. I think you said patriot.com. Go to petroleum. I mean, patreon.com slash Jessica Curson. That's patreon.com slash Jessica Curson. Patreon.com slash Jessica Curson. Thanks again. And cut. That's a wrap. Ugh. Are you a screamer in the relationship? Be honest. No. Really? No, not at all. Yeah. I'm not either. I, uh, Isn't that funny? I'm not, but I'm, cr- I, 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 I used to be, I used to be a screamer I, years ago. I was a screamer years ago too. And this is like the first, that's why I married her because she's for some reason we, even now we're not really fighting that much at all. And it, when we do fight, it's like, it, it passes, like it's nothing. Oh, she doesn't, that's good. The thing I love about her, is she doesn't hold it. She doesn't bring it up. It's just over. She like gets it. That's she's like, so uh, good. Giannis. It's fun. Yeah. That's so. really important. I mean, especially now when you're sitting in the same fucking environment, 24 hours a day, but yeah. she seems easy. She, she's not, She's very easy. She's not She's intense. Easy. I mean, I could never be with someone as intense as I am because we would end up just combusting. Like, yeah. I, yeah. Can't yeah, it do took it. me a while to learn that one. Yeah. Yeah, it took me a while too. I, I, I really get it. T- tell people, like, I'm curious, did you grow up, were, you, were your parents, did they fight a lot, your parents? Yeah. Mine I mean, did. My parents were, my parents first, yeah, they come from a different generation where it was like, my dad got back from the Korean War and he went to Brooklyn Law School and my mom was one of the only women in the law school and she was Greek. So it's like, wow. because she's Greek, that era, it's like, you just marry, they're going to get married. Yeah. You know, it's like, oh, it's another Greek. Greeks, are, a lot of Greeks are still like that. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, they'll fucking inbred till the cows come home. But it's like, they'll inbred, you know. So it's like, but they just got married because they were both Greek. So who knows how compatible they were to begin with. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was really just because they were Greek and they met at a law school. And then they were stupid enough to fucking start a business together. What so kind of like business? Oh, that's right. Wait, what did they do? They were both attorneys. So oh, together they were in a law firm. Oh, my God. My mother was a human rights attorney, and that's what she wanted to do. And she worked for the United Nations. Wow. But my father convinced her to, like, like be in business with her. So, like, Pappas and Pappas was, like, their... So she did that for a couple of years for the United Nations, but mostly she was working with him. And that's just a recipe for disaster, working together and living together, raising a family. And not even, and like just being together because you're both Greek and it's like what you're supposed to do. That's what my parents did. Yeah. Yeah. But that's a lot. Yeah. And they have, that's so, and they stayed, wait, did they get divorced? They got divorced, but they got divorced like 30 years in. Yeah, that's interesting. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, you know, you know, it's 
Like, because at that point, I would have just stuck it out. But, you know, marriage is tough for 30 years in. My dad's like, you know what? I'm, I'm 70, but you know what? I can't handle this shit anymore. I'm going to go out there to nothing. That is, <laughs> I'd rather be alone in my, yeah. I'd rather no dad, one wipe my ass than you do it. Yeah. Yeah. My mom, yeah, my dad, my mom was the, kind of the tough hang. I mean, I get, I get, I have a mix of both. Like, yeah. But my mom was the one who was a little bit of the tough hang. <laughs> she, she was, was a, tough hang. a screamer. Like she was a screamer. She was a control freak. kind of everything had to be done her way. And then towards the end, like I, I've realized this now that I've got, I'm in my forties and stuff and I've watched my parents kind of decompensate and my father you know die and everything and like yeah, what sorry. the second half of life is some people i've realized some people live only one half some people live neither half of mm -hmm. life some people live one half and some, some people live both halves mm -hmm. my father definitely lived both halves of his life the way you're supposed to my mom lived the first half and then the second half was just she threw it was brutal I mean, you throw, you know, people start to cave in like after 40s, like your second half. Yeah. And that's the half where you got to really work harder to challenge yourself. Yeah. To, to think outside of what your habits, to, 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 to like people who you, or find reasons to like people who you otherwise wouldn't. Cause then it just, if you don't do those things, if you don't exercise, you don't challenge yourself, you don't force yourself, you don't take on new things. You you end up just becoming a shut in and your world gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller until you just like trapped in a room and you wither away, you know? So it's is like, that what she did? That's what she did. That's yeah. what she did. She just, she didn't, she didn't take those things from her. You can get away with those foibles mm -hmm. in your personality in your first half of your life. Cause you're young and healthy. Yes. You know, people still want to fuck you. You still have your health, all that stuff. But in your second half, if you, if you don't, start working on yourself and, and challenge yourself and figure out you got to, you know, keep learning, keep reading, keep go outside of your box purposefully to, to stimulate your brain and to that. And yeah, you, you lose, you lose that. So my mother's one of those people. And I think there's a lot of people. I really believe that those are the three categories of, of people who have like a free life. Like in America, we're lucky enough to have a free life. Those are the people you either live your first half or you live neither. Those are the people who just like, you know, fucking, it's unfortunate. They have fears and they just locked in or whatever, but first or second or both. And yeah. I, I was, I was lucky enough to have a role model with my dad who lived both. Mm -hmm. And I, maybe the silver lining is I saw my mother too. And I was like, Oh, don't do that. That don't happened. Do that. that happens a lot. Like I, I'm a different parent because of things that I went through. Like I, you yeah. can either do the same thing your parents did or, do the opposite. And I'm so grateful I'm aware enough to do the opposite because most people just do the same or they just stay like their parents. They don't work on themselves or is your mom still alive? She's still alive. She has uh she has Alzheimer's. So she's in a, that's right. She's at, yeah, she's at this place and it's like, it's just that the, 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 bru the brutality of that is hard to even. It's horrible. Anyway, I just have, it makes you think when a parent is sick, um, or they start losing their mind, whatever it is. It's, it's really an interesting thing to go through. Yeah. And it's, it's, um, it's so funny because your wife is sounds so different than your mom. You know, it's like you either choose someone exactly like your parent or like you yeah. get out of the box and choose someone that's different. Yeah. You have to, uh, you have to try like, um, there's some similarities. There's some differences I've noticed. You know, I think you pick the, sim the similarities are hard to avoid, uh, mm -hmm. you know, but um, yeah, for the most part, it's very different. And, um, you know, I don't blame my mother. I don't look at my mother and go like, you know, I don't put her in this bad box or good box. Mm -hmm. She had many, many good qualities. My father also had bad qualities as well. I just think overall, my dad in the second half challenged himself to to keep learning, to, to, to actually, he did those things that suited him, served him and suited him well and more suited him better in the second half of life. And I don't blame my mother that much either because we're, when you think about this, nobody really puts us into context, but we, you know, maybe a generation before, like, but we're the first couple of generations mm -hmm. to be able to make our own choices I know. in the world. That's right. 
this is a new fucking thing. You're right. You know, it's mm -hmm. like it used to be, you know, this is a new thing. It used to be like you were you were born into a religion. That's what you did. Yep. You you had pretty much an arranged marriage. Mm -hmm. you, there was all nobody could just end up doing what they wanted to do. I mean, women couldn't even fucking vote. You know, if you were a woman, you could you couldn't even be like if you were if you if you were if you like if you were a girl who liked girls or a boy who liked boy or whatever, you couldn't do that shit. You're you right. That's so true. I mean, yeah. you don't think about that stuff, but it's really things are constant. Even I mean, I I hate saying this, but the kids not like the kids. I mean, really, in their twenties. I can't even believe how different it is than even when I grew up. Like no one came out in high school. No one. Right. I don't right. know one person right. who said I'm gay in high school. Right. And now it's and, like, and you're weird. If you're not, if you don't experiment or say I'll be with a guy or a girl, like it's so different. Right. They're, um, you know, they, they are so open now. And like, uh, you know, they, I look, they look at us probably in generations after the way we looked at older generations, like, you know, when they said the word colored and they're going like, what the fuck's wrong? It's like you, the young kids got to realize like, hey, the world's changed uh, and the world changed because of us. Yeah. You fucking idiots. <laughs> so it's like, don't think you just magically are so fucking progressive. And I know woke they're so nowhere. annoying. It like, makes me crazy. It yeah. It's like this was a this was a succession. And you might want to listen to people who are a little bit older than you, because actually we're the reason we're the bridge between that generation and you being taking Molly and sucking each other's dicks whenever you want. So just fucking <laughs> relax and like maybe listen to older people a little bit because they're so maybe, pompous. They really are. They like every young generation, but like, yeah, they're because they're the first generation that has experienced this level of comfort and freedom. Now things are going to change because now this is real. So now they're going to get a little dose of what we had with crack, and fucking the Cold War. <laughs> and, and AIDS, AIDS. you're right. We had AIDS crack in the Cold War. Yeah, <laughs> I have a few anxiety attacks. That's the fucking reason why. I had to walk through Brooklyn and people were punching me in the head for my hat, you know? It's like, yeah, it was a little different. <laughs> punching me in the head for my hat. Yeah, and like, you know. I hope no one does that to me. If anyone no, punches we me in the head, I'm, I'm done. I, I can't. Yeah, I hope it doesn't come back. But like when we were kids, it was like you turn on the TV and they're like, yeah, Russia's going to nuke us any second. You know, it was yeah. like we, we grew up with the Cold War and then everyone was dying of AIDS and everyone was doing crack. It was wild, dude. It was a wild time to grow up. But, you know, if you survive that, and you live through that, you have some wisdom and stuff. It's like the young kids now, all their intentions are good. Mm -hmm. It's all good. It's just they go to, they're just, they go much like the hippies did mm -hmm. when they became the yippies. They just go too far. And that's unfortunate because then what happens is like this, they give fuel to the other side, which pulls it back too far the other way. It's like humans are just, it's this pendulum of extremes because everyone wants to watch car crashes. Like, I so know, that's what gets it's the bad. It's so bad. It really is. I mean, I don't know. I don't know what, what do you like not to get into a whole thing. I'm really curious about your opinion about this, but do you think that Trump will win again? Like, I don't want to get into a whole thing about politics, but do you think yeah. he'll win again? Now? I don't know. I, I too. he was going to win for certain. That's how I feel. Yeah, for sure. He was going to win because an incumbent when the economy's good, he's always going to win. Right. I mean, it's just like, I actually, there was a professor from my school, American university, who he came up with the model and he's never got one wrong, I think, since. I know that. I've heard of him. I yeah, went to Maryland. I didn't know you went to American. I had no yeah, idea. Yeah, I went to American. That's yeah. awesome. So you, uh, yeah, that's how I feel. I was like, oh, he's definitely going to win. Da, da, da. And now with this, I'm like, oh, I don't know. This could look bad for him. This could be bad. The economy's going to crash. Um, uh, Biden's not going to, Biden is a horrible candidate. Though. I don't know what it, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, it's like it's like the, the, the Democrats, it's like they can't play politics anymore. It's like every, they're living this ideal. They live in the the, the, the the left has gotten into the platonic realm where everything is these ideals. You know, it's like Bernie's talking about this fucking utopia and, and Biden is the, the idea of this tough guy that can take on uh, Biden's. He eats children for nourishment and he's going to die any second. You know, Bernie is fucking way too far left for America. This is not fucking Sweden. We don't, there's not a population of 5 million fucking blondes, progressive blondes who walk around and accept Sudanese mm -hmm. fucking refugees. Mm -hmm. I mean, get, get realistic, America. Take the fucking gloves off. 
We need killers You're now. Right. We need a fucking killer. Who is we it? Oh, so who is Cuomo. it? Cuomo. Got to be Cuomo. Got to be Cuomo. This this pandemic. I love him. Yeah, I somebody do. Needs I to love Tanya him. So Harding does my Harding family. Biden. Someone needs to Tanya Harding Biden. Take his knees out. I can't take it. Can someone yeah. do that, or is that the craziest thing? Can is it just Biden now? Is it's that just who it Biden. is? It's going to okay. be Biden. It's Biden and Bernie, but obviously Bernie's Bernie never had a chance. I mean, it's like a, it's like a it's like the delusion of people to think that this guy who's yelling about fucking socialism and this is America. This well, was I have I have family mem not like not my uh, not my parents or my siblings or whatever but i have family members who i had dinner with before this pandemic and my uncle said to me i won't vote for i won't vote if it's bernie i yeah. won't vote for trump but i will not vote for bernie because he's, got, no he's a lot of money and i was like oh my you have to vote but anyway that's how he felt about it he said he's too left for me he's just too left yeah he's not going to win the nomination either so it's it's a moot point but uh, I think Cuomo could win it because Cuomo, you know, like a, like Ulysses Grant, who was a, basically a drunk and a nobody before the Civil War, like like hard times make these people, you know, come out of the woodworks and it just creates these heroes. And the kid Cuomo is handling this like a star. I know, but can he even run now? No. I don't know, man. I think, uh, I don't know. I don't know the details of that. I think it's possible. I think it's early enough. I don't know. That's a good question. I don't I don't know the answer to that unless Biden drops out or, you know, if the DNC discovers like, you know, starts to think about it a little bit, maybe. You know what? Biden, Bernie and Trump might die by November and then it could just they be could like die, Como yeah. and Kellyanne or something like maybe it's yeah. just going to be this crazy election. Yeah. Who knows? Who, who knows what's going to happen? Today? I think I'm hoping I'm hoping that people want the professionals back they go enough yeah. with the game show host me too enough with this enough with the 28 year old bartender i know like let's get back to the killers like i i hate hillary and i will fucking vote for hillary tomorrow i want a killer in there i want a professional politician i feel the exact same way who who you know it's like that scene in the matrix where the guy goes you know what i don't want to remember any of this just give me a steak mm -hmm. uh it tastes so good like I'll go back to the guy who can lie to me with a smile on his face or the girl who can lie to me and just go bomb an entire country. And just as long as I don't got to hear about it and my iPhone works and my charger is good, I want to go back to that. I want to go back to ignorance is bliss. <laughs> I love listening to you. <laughs> I'm like listening to you with my eyes open. Like, I feel like you're helping me feel like I, there's going to be hope, like something's going to be OK. Do you have hope right now? I'm having a hard time. I do. Really? I do have hope. Yeah. I, I, you know, when times were good, I was more of a pessimist, but I just believe in that indomitable human spirit, like the, the will to live. When you look at anything, like I, I was thinking of this fucking stink bug. It made me, I had to, you know, cause now I live in the country, I get these fucking stink bugs and they come in the house and like, what is you that? Know, they're like these little bugs that live in the country and they're harmless, but they get in your house and like they're everywhere and they just don't stop. And, um, and I, and I was thinking about the stink bug. I, I go like, why? And even the virus, the coronavirus, like, why does the coronavirus want to propagate? Like, what's its will to live? Because basically, when you when you break all life down to its fundamental level, the thing that it's mostly concerned with is propagation, is just continuing, just going on. And we've done it the best. Mm -hmm. So... We still are the favorite to win any fight because we evolved from fucking, you know, a chimpanzee ancestor. Yeah. That and and we continued through through an ice age, through through fucking, you know, we've only been the, the apex predator to this planet for a very short amount of time. Mm -hmm. For most of our existence, we were eaten by saber toothed tigers, hyenas, and everything until we partnered with dogs. What was that will to continue on? That will when we were getting eaten, when people were dying at 25, you know, when women would, you know, you had a 50, per, people don't even, people have such a short memory. Women, they're like, we need women in the workforce. It's like, yes, we do. We do. We need equality. Yes. But you have to remember a fucking hundred years ago, 50 to 60% of women would die during childbirth. Yeah, I know. I mean, yep. it's like, how come That's... women weren't lawyers a hundred years ago? It's like, cause half of them would fucking die. <laughs> it's like, what kind of 
kind of utopia you're living in. Like they don't. Of women, I know they don't get it. They don't get it, and it's no. never enough. And it's but, but, it's unrealistic. But besides it's, that, we kept going. We kept going. Mm -hmm. So I believe we're gonna. I believe there will be a scientist or someone who will come up with a cure, and we will live. I think we will too. I really do. I just think it's going to be very different. I'm, I'm so, I'm, I'm, I love my house, but I feel like, are you in like Alabama? You keep saying the country. You don't have to say what town because I know someone might try to kill you. But yeah. are you in Westchester? <laughs> like in that area? Where yeah, I just can't say because I'm just not the type of comedian who people are not going to try to kill. No, me too. <laughs> I know someone, some lesbian is going to try to kill me one day. Yeah, I um no, I I've been I'm, I'm, ignoring I'm, my messages and I uh and I'm gonna kill you, you know, like I'm very afraid of that. Wait. Yeah, I uh yeah, I'm just in the country. I'm close to New York though, but you know, it's just I yeah, I'm in the country. It's so great because yeah, it, thank God because if I didn't move to, I was in an apartment, and I yeah. was like, if I don't get to some nature, some grass outside and trees, I'm gonna I'm gonna fucking lose my mind. Thank God before all of this, we did that. Yeah. Yeah, I, um, I, I'm living the opposite of what I used to live like, and I, I love it. So it's, uh, it's, I'm, I'm not used to it at all, but I love it. The piece of it is so nice. I know. You seem relaxed, even though the country, it, everyone's on yeah, a ventilator. You know, I, just, I just screamed for an hour. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you like, you seem very relaxed, uh, you know, for someone who's so unstable. <laughs> Yeah, you don't seem <laughs> suicidal, which is so weird. Yeah, I am. I'm, I think this is the most peaceful I've ever felt. Like, I, my anxiety has subsided. I wonder um, why, Yana. Seriously, because you're home. Is that why? Because you just have to be home? That might be why. I, I think part of it, and I also think part of it is, like, you ever notice that when, when things are really good, we have, we're, we're like, comedians, I think, I, I can't speak for other part, but, like, other people, but, like, we're such narcissists that, when things are good, we almost, we want to ruin it because we start focusing more on ourselves. And oh, we, for uh, sure. You, we have, we, we essentially have more time to, to think when things are bad. Like now, I feel like I'm outside of myself more. I'm thinking more about other things and the well-being of other things. So maybe that's why I have less anxiety. That's so interesting. I understand yeah. that though. I really yeah. do. I was much, I, I mean, I'm freaked out and nervous and like trying to have hope and I hate not knowing what's going to happen. I have a huge thing with that and change, but on the other hand, I don't feel as much pressure because I'm not like on the road, like having to fill rooms and doing all this. Like I'm, I'm a little, I feel a little less pressure in that way, even yeah. though I'm not making money like this. I can't, it's hard to explain, but I get what you're saying. And when things I think were part of, really going well, it was, I was stressed out. Yeah. I think part of it too is like when you take a vacation, usually as a comedian in our business, the world keeps moving. Our business keeps moving. So even when we're on vacation, it's a little stressful because you feel like you're missing something. Yes. You're not doing spots. But now that the whole world has stopped, we're truly on vacation because we're going like, I'm not doing anything, but neither are those other people. So I can really relax. Are you, are you missing being on stage? No, me either. Isn't yeah. that funny? I'm not, yeah. I'm not at all. I'm not, I'm not at all. Um, yeah, I mean, I, part maybe part of it is because we have this outlet where we're continuing to, you mm -hmm. know, like I, 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 me and my old partner Jesse, we've started shooting again. So we're we're doing characters. I'm doing the characters I used oh, to do again. Oh, that's so good. I'm do. I'm just. I feel. I if it all feels very fun again. Um, oh, I love that. Me too. I am doing stuff like even when I go live. And I know some people, I feel like I have to do that with my fans to stay connected sometimes. It's, yeah. I don't like it, but then after I do it, I'm like, oh, I feel better. Like I just connected with people. I'm being creative. I feel like I'm being funny. And yeah. I kind of was getting sick of just going up and telling jokes. Yeah, me too. Especially um, things started to get weird in stand up a little bit where everyone was putting out a special and mm -hmm. everyone was putting up clips online. So it kind of devalued the whole thing. Any, and then everyone started doing stand up. You're right. The one, the one good thing about this is I think a lot of people who don't have real chops or aren't really that funny, I think they're going to get eaten up by this tidal wave. So do I. Tim Dillon said that, yeah. but I totally agree. Yeah. I, I complete, I think only the people who are really seasoned, 
um, and who have a following already are going to have an easier time. I mean, it's going to be hard for people who are not seasoned. It's going to be really hard for people. And I, I hope what comes out of this, because, you know, like Darwinism, it's not the strongest who survives. It's the ones that adapt to change the best. A lot of people always make that mistake. They think it's the strongest that survived. That's not Darwin was saying at all. He was saying those that had, you know, and a lot of times it's the weaker that survive because they adapt to the change better than the stronger. Um, so it's, I hope a lot of comedians realize now that like, you know, it's not all about the art of comedy. Mm -hmm. Like New York is very like, oh my God, who's the best? It's like, who's the best at what? Telling jokes? Yeah, who cares? It's so like, much what more are you than talking that. About, like, you know, it's like, we're not, you, you, uh, none of, nobody here is Charlie Parker. We're not, yep. you know, we're, we're not, we're not, we're not fucking Van Gogh. Mm -hmm. We're, we're up there making people laugh and being silly. And at the end of the day, you know, you, you need with, with the change that's happened in, in the, in, in our business with the digital medium, you, you can't look down at people who are entrepreneurs and who are doing it themselves, because if you do that, you're losing. Because mm -hmm. those people have adapted to the change. Yes. And you are dying. Mm -hmm. So you may be the best guy and be sitting at a table and everyone's going, wow, that was a really killer joke. But you have to remember, you just got paid less than the wait staff of that place. <laughs> so good. I hope you yeah. feel great about yourself. You're the king of your little kingdom that nobody gives a shit about. Yeah, I, you're completely right. It's it's I always say it's so much more than being funny or having good jokes. That that's 10% right. of it. It's 10% it's, and uh, it's, you, you can say whether that's good or bad till the cows come home. It is. I know. So, that's you know? so true. It really yeah. is. I mean, I totally agree with you and I'm so grateful that you did this. I love even just seeing your face. You guys have to watch this on YouTube because Giannis is so cute. You have such a cute face. Thank and you. I can and say you that because I don't I don't want you. I mean, I love you, but I don't want you. And you know that. But um, yeah, but I, I just adore you. You're fucking brilliant. So many of you that listen to this podcast know Giannis. But if they don't tell them where they can check you out and tell them about the podcast, please, because it's so fucking funny. Well, you can. Yeah. History Hyenas with Chris Stefano, who, you know, he's just one of the na most naturally funny guys on the planet. So I just feel blessed that, I, you know, me and him have so much fun and do a podcast together. Check out History Hyenas. Please check out my special that's free online, YouTube, Blow in the Light. And again, check out the Jessica Kirsten episode. And of course, she'll, you're going to be back on so many times that it's just and i'm glad you're with jim jim is such a great guy you know we cut him out of our patreon just because you know we needed the money so but you know oh, please jim, yeah jim is the greatest he's 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 not only a great manager he's a he's a he's creative which is a good combo and in this era like he's a guy like he's the type of manager who's going to survive yeah because he's shooting stuff he has those skills and he can actually help you grow you know? Yeah, I know. Like, it's so true. A lot of them have no idea what to do. And I've been with them. It's like, they don't even know what the fuck they're talking about. They're not creative yeah. at all. They're just, and it's interesting because some of them just take on those huge people who made them a ton of money live. And now look. Yeah, exactly. Right? I mean, managers are, it's like, you have to, everyone has to adapt. I mean, who knows what the world's going to look like on the other side, but like me and Tim were talking last night, and, you know, when the clubs open up, and I, I probably believe the seller's the only one that's going to, has, you know, I hope other ones survive. I love them all. And, but, I mean, the seller, he owns, you know, they've made so much money and Gnome owns all that stuff. Yeah. He's got no overhead. So he can, he can afford to bleed for a little while. But when the clubs open up, it's like even when people start coming back out to shows, they're not going to come out to see regular lineups. I know. Like, you're not just going to get normal people like tourists off the street say, hey, you want to see a comedy show mm -hmm. based off the reputation of the spot or whatever. It's like when things open up again, you're going to have to get people who have fans who want to see them in Absolutely. your room to kickstart your business again. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to be going, like the ones who have podcasts and fans are going to be going, okay, wait a second. Like, I'm not going to take... You're not going to pay me $75 for this, yeah. which by the way, $75, $85, you know, if you think about it, like what, what Ted and um, uh, Russ Maneev did uh. was a good thing because not only do comedians not, 
get a pay raise. We actually lose money every year because they don't adjust, they don't adjust it for inflation. So if you keep it at 75 or 85, not only are you not increasing it, you're actually decreasing it because you haven't adjusted the pay for inflation every year. So now comedians are going to come in and go like, you know, I need your spots. I need to work out, mm -hmm. but you need me too. Like, let's cut a door deal. Let's, you know, let's yes. do like a one night thing where it's like Tim Dillon and friends mm -hmm. or, you know, and Tim Dillon does a little podcast. He does, he has Jessica Kirsten yep. on. He has like a couple of fucking killers. Mm -hmm. Nobody's going to be interested in anything except killers. I, like, I agree. And if they're going to spend yeah. money, it's going to be on, fan, it's going to be on someone that, that they want to see. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. This, for an era like this, for you, you're going to flourish now and on the other side of this because nobody's going to want to listen to me talk about, you know, fucking be serious. It's like yep. people want to laugh. They want to fucking, they want to be, they want to just go in there and see someone who knows what they're doing, knows how to work a room, knows how to fucking crush and has experience. And like those fucking young kids who are getting specials and doing all that experimental TED Talk shit. Nobody's got a stomach I know. for it anymore it, because things are actually real and people need funny. Mm -hmm. I agree with you. So then let's just get through this without hurting ourselves and then we'll end up flourishing after this <laughs> pandemic. Yeah, well, I'm going to get through it. I don't know if I can do it without hurting myself. That's part of my nature. Oh, I do I'm it all eat. the time. I'm about to go yeah. shove chips down my throat before the next yeah, thing. Yeah. I, yeah, I've put on 15 pounds. I'm not even lying. Yeah. I don't know why I'm drinking beer. I'm just doing it all day. I'm about to go have one right now. Oh, I'm I'm. <laughs> Today I have to after this podcast I just I, I'm in my pajamas still but I'm I'm gonna put the only thing I can wear now is a fitted sheet nothing fits me I just don't know what <laughs> so you just walk around like a ghost you yeah like I just wear a fitted toga? sheet and I tie it with I just tie um, Twizzlers those strings around and I just that's my belt it's very bad. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, what else are we supposed to do? We can't I, go to the gym. No, I mean, I can walk outside, but I'm. It's too much to even get down the stairs to go out to the sidewalk. It's there's. It's, yeah. Send my love to your wife. I adore you. I will. I will. We will talk soon, guys. Follow Giannis. He is so fucking funny, and the characters are brilliant. Oh, oh hi! That was amazing. Yes. Look, it's your favorite comedian. Hi. Hi. No, I love her. You hear her? She Why'd she run away? She doesn't like being on camera, which is also a good reason why we're married. And why is she one. in pants? She needs to put on a dress and slap on some lipstick. Yeah, she says, get, you know, make yourself up a little bit. You can't just walk around here burp all, all the time. Yeah. What a pig. She says it's quarantine. She can do whatever she wants. She's right. Tell her I have no pants on. All right. Yeah. I love you, and we will talk very soon. Thank you again for doing this. Thank you for having me. And th let, thank you for letting me show all your fans the full range of my mental illness. I, <laughs> I love you so much. <laughs>